Hi everyone, so let's talk about how you can easily make a presentation using a template. So uh, the way I'm going to show you how to do that is I'm using a template I created which you can download for free. There's a link at the bottom of this video. You could use any other template. Uh, these principles apply. And really it's no different than you just doing it in um, the good old way in PowerPoint. I'm just going to show you a few ways to do it faster. Um, okay, so I have a template here loaded into Keynote um, and it works similar to PowerPoint and I'm going to go to the first slide here and let's just jump in and see how we can edit this to represent uh, some of, let's say, your percentages. So uh, this is an isotype diagram or an icon diagram uh, as some people call it. Uh, out of 10 men, which represent 100%, we're showing percentages by groups, right? And uh, let's say we want to... Uh, edit this 20% to 10% over here the yellow percentages so how do I change this so if I drag my mouse over uh, all the elements I see that they're all made up of separate shapes which means I can edit them okay great so all I need to do now is color this yellow man uh, into this default gray so I go to format over here on the right and then I click on the color wheel and then I go to the eyedropper and I grab the color from the default man and now um, you see that the, the yellow group is 10% uh, one man. Alright, so this is great for showing one group of people. Uh, what if you had several groups of people? And Let's say you want to compare percentages between your customers in the United States and the UK and uh, Brazil and Japan. Then you want multiple groups. And here's a a multiple group diagram so these are showing percentages out of 10 for each group right so uh, again you can go and color each one like this uh, now what if you wanted to scale them so that they're even bigger on your slide uh, what you want to do is you want to mouse over all of them then holding control say group okay once we have a group we can easily scale it now it's really big Okay, let's zoom out to make sure that we're still staying inside the slide. Oh yeah, we have a lot of room. Okay, so you probably want to zoom it as big as you can because um, uh, the icons uh, are uh, should be visible uh, because they do represent people and uh, you want people to remember that. Okay, once you have scaled, you want to ungroup again because then you can uh, edit it further. Okay, so now we can edit this we could uh, create some other group inside this like that okay uh, next is again a single group but here we're showing groups out of a hundred so a hundred percent is represented by literally a hundred people and this is handy for when your percentages are not rounded not 40 versus 30 but uh, let's say uh, 14 versus uh, uh, 37 and so on and there's even a way to cut off half a percentage which I'm going to show you in the next video um, let me know if you want to know about that okay the next slide compares two uh, hundreds uh, side by side so uh, this doesn't have to be men versus versus women this could be um, you know enterprise clients versus uh, small business clients and so on and this is just another way to compare the groups. so we took this slide uh, over here multiple groups and we're comparing them against each other all right so that's all for icon diagrams next uh, we have non-numeric slides uh, non-numeric diagrams uh, which represent concepts so oftentimes we need to represent some sort of a process like the registration process or the project the, uh, the way that the, the process works for starting a project and so on so here uh, all this text is editable and if you need to edit these icons you can go to the very last slide over here and you can take this meeting icon for partnership, do command C and drop it in the slide that you need over here. Delete this one, drop this one and here you go. Okay, that's pretty uh, straightforward. Same uh, in the timeline. Timeline is one of my favorite templates because almost everyone in the world understands timelines. We all understand how time flows and so it's one of the easiest templates to follow. If you ever fear that you put up a slide on there and people look at it 
wondering, well, what are you trying to represent here visually? Timeline is usually a safe way to go. Uh, of course, uh, it should have a chronological component to it. You should show what uh, what the year is what or what the scale is. Um, and there should be a clear correlation with event description and when it happened. As long as you have those things, you're good. Okay, next is uh, a tree. Uh, so anytime you have anything branching out, it's going to be choices, right? Options or factors that are affecting something. This diagram could be uh, extended to have more branches, more factors. Um, if you use uh, Adioma, which is an infographic maker uh, that uh, I've made, and um, here you can easily delete these. So when, again, you can do control, ungroup, and let's say you want one less of these, so you can delete. To add is a little bit trickier because these uh, curves um, do have to be made just right. And now I'm going to group them back and scale. Uh, but I did make it easy inside the infographic maker because we can use algorithms to build these. Um, actually, as many of these as you want in one diagram. Okay, what if you wanted to compare different choices? Uh, so maybe uh, features of one product on one side and, fe and features of another product on the other uh, and so on. So you can use two of these groups and then uh, in the middle this illustration can suggest which group you're leaning towards. Next is a similar tree, different orientation. And now Venn diagrams. So Venn uh, and uh, Euler diagrams, they represent overlapping factors. Uh, most people understand them. It's pretty universal. Uh, the, the, the thing to watch out for is that if you have an overlap, make sure you label it, um, like here. Okay, these are different variations of them. Concentric circles are also pretty universal. Uh, you could add icons over here, uh, but again, just keeping the labels um, pretty concise and clear is the main uh, thing to watch out for here. Okay, having a spoke wheel diagram is handy for uh, showing lines of business or options, or um, it's, it's similar to a tree, but uh, it uses space in a different way. It gives you a, a focus point in the middle, so, um, Having an illustration there is handy. Again, if you want to group and scale that, then it can be nice and large for your audience. There you go. Okay, next is, again, a timeline. Uh, like I said, they're universal. Uh, they're great. This, this horizontal orientation works great for wide format slides. The vertical one is better for um, the, uh, the, the, the thinner aspect ratio. This timeline has the most effective uh, use of space because um, basically you have three rows and they're all connected, uh, so you could really communicate some complicated process here. Uh, I recommend that using that for you know any registration application uh, kind of processes because you can say a lot and make it really clear. Okay, cycle is for cycles. Um, when you have a cyclical process, like a seasonal process, development cycle, product cycle, use that, it's on point. It's not really an illustration, so the circle is not illustrate, illustrative because people will read it clockwise. Uh, and if that's not what you mean, then uh, try to stay away from that. Okay, the brain illustration uh, is basically a nice analogy for communicating this is our thinking, this is our philosophy. Again, we're not literally saying which part of the brain our thinking is in, but it does uh, give people a framework to think about something so... Um, abstract as thinking and ideas. Uh, next we have charts. So these charts can be generated inside Keynote as you see over here. Once you generate them with your data you can style them using the example I gave you here. This one is not generated in um, Keynote. Uh, same goes for here. A bar chart versus bubble chart. Which one should you use? Well the bar chart makes it easier to compare the length of the bars uh, the bubble chart makes it harder, so why would you ever want to use a bubble chart? Well, bubble charts make it easier to see the overall picture. So if you don't need to know exactly how much one variable is uh, larger or smaller than the other, then bubble charts are great. If you have many of them, uh, like in the bubble chart over here, you have groups of variables, 
Then over here, we can clearly see, okay, product one in 2019 will, will have the winning sale projection or has the winning sale projection. Uh, this bird eye view is great for bubble charts. If you want a more granular analysis, not so great. So it depends on your purpose. All right, going back to the diagrams here. Next, we have this anatomy diagram, and this is an analogy for uh, explaining anything about um, human behavior, basically customer ana anatomy. So what, the, what are their needs? What are, their, what are the features that they're using to solve different problems? Uh, here you can compare two, two sides of the coin, two, two ways in which a customer might think, uh, of course, male and female, the same with the thinking of a customer. Pyramid and final diagram, pretty uh, self-explanatory. You can build upon these. You can um, uh, add layers in both of these uh, easily. Uh, this diagram is great for, think for showing what's coming next, what's in the future. Uh, this is an org chart. Um, again, you can change all these icons with the um, connectors. To delete one is easy. To add one. Uh, you could, uh, but probably better to use uh, other software. Uh, one of them would be Adioma. Um, here, the orientation is different, so it's easier to see on a wide screen. The map, um, again, self-explanatory, but you can definitely copy these pointers and move them around, and definitely you can color them, so it's editable in that way. Uh, this layout is great for showing connections between different factors, or maybe between your markets, or maybe between your features. Uh, these connectors can be moved. Again, holding control, you say ungroup, and then you move each individual connector. Just like that. All right. The Sankey diagram, this is the chord Sankey diagram, is great for showing flow um, or numbers and connections at the same time. The PowerPoint will not make this one. Um, I know that there's some other software uh, which make them. If you're interested about that one, uh, leave your question in the comments and I'll uh, try to answer it. But I put it here as a way uh, to show you that it's possible, number one. Number two, how you might style it. Okay, the area chart, this is the multiple area chart. So the area charts of different variables stacked on top of each other. The transparency makes it easier to see what's going on in the background. Again, you, you would have to create these, one, these ones one by one and then uh, style them uh, to match the rest of the presentation. This is a Sankey chart. Uh, again, uh, some software creates it. It's still pretty uh, complex uh, to generate one, but if you want to generate one, um, leave your question in the comments and uh, use this as, as a, a, a styling, styling guideline. Try to keep it simple. Um, again, this is a great chart, though, to show um, connections and numbers at the same time. Okay, radar graphs are great for comparing uh, things that you don't need to know exactly how, uh, how they compare in terms of numbers, but just the gist of how um, they perform in different in different variables. So often uh, people use radar charts to compare smells or tastes um, or in this case we're comparing products of competitors over the years so the, the small multiples at the bottom were other years um, but here we don't know the, exactly how much pricier this product in the middle is we just know that the price is uh, as high as it can be but the speed is, is uh, quite low and the customization is somewhere in the middle and that's all we know. So if you need this sort of high-level rough analysis, then this is a great chart. And this pyramid chart is just a styled bar chart. Um, again, use it if you think it looks good, but it doesn't really add more meaning than bar charts. Okay, last, uh, I'm giving two full slides of icons that are good for business and, you know, in general, people, uh, relationships, uh, relations, I should say, um, you can drag, drag and drop these on any slides. If you need more icons, we have thousands of them in Adioma if you want to try it out. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. So using this template, you should be able to make a quick presentation pretty easily. And thanks for watching. So that was like 15 minutes. <laughs>